Hey guys, Nikki here, writing for Jesus. Um, so first of all, sorry if my voice sounds kind of weird. Um, I'm getting over a cold, but praise the Lord, it was not bad at all, and I was still able to go to church. And So today's video, I wanted to try something new, and I wanted to give y'all five tips to improve your writing. Uh, these are just my top five tips that I think that can really strengthen uh, writing and it's really helped me in my editing process. So here we go. Tip number one, um, act it out. Acting out my scenes has really helped me figure out what is the most realistic and natural for my characters to say. Um, especially for my fight scenes. Um, I've had a couple scenes where I've had people get, um, you know, physically angry with each other. And so um, uh, I act out the scene through each character's perspective. And uh, yeah, it just helps me figure out what is the most realistic um, movement to do in this kind of situation. And it's really fun for me. Um, I am an actress though at heart, so it comes very naturally for me to act out the scenes and when I read a book it plays out like a movie in my head and so it just helps me to act it out. <clears throat> it's honestly how I got started writing. Um, I had wanted to really try getting into acting as a career and I felt the Lord telling me no that that was not for me. Um, he really gave me the writing as a gift um, to be able to get my acting you know creative outlet out um, through the writing so that was really a gift. And also, I was kind of going through a hard time. Uh, I was going through a breakup, and uh, he gave me the idea for my book and really just kind of told me, okay, get going. Like, your goal right now is to write for me. It is not to get married right now. And so, yeah, I started writing, and I feel so fulfilled from doing that. And I've been really happy in my single life. And, um, yeah, things have been really good. So, Okay, tip number two. Remove filtering. Now, filtering is when you're looking through like a filter to read the book. And that means whenever you use one of the senses, one of the five senses, um, to tell the reader something, like she heard the sound of a train coming, you don't have to say she heard because if it's from that character's perspective, whatever they see whatever they hear is going to appear on screen, on the page. And so if you just say a train, you know, blew past, then you're going to say, oh, okay, she heard it, she saw it, you know, the train whistle blared, you know. I mean, you can, if you're making that, the, the train, the subject, you're going to know that the character is hearing that and seeing that. But when you say she felt his hand on her shoulder, he, she saw this, she heard this, she smelled this. Whenever you use those words, it really comes across like you're telling the reader and it's just kind of unnecessary to say that. And so if you can just cut those words out, it makes it a lot cleaner and a lot uh, neater. Tip number three, use strong verbs. Remove weak verbs with an adverb. And so instead of saying he ran quickly, you can say he dashed or he raced, you know, down the hall. I mean, you use a stronger verb and a lot more of a punchier kind of verb to really get your point across. And it also cuts words. Um, I feel like less is more. So the fewer words you can say to get your point across, the better. Tip number four, twist the cliche. I really try to avoid saying cliches um, like, oh, he just threw caution to the wind and he, and so if you can just completely avoid them, that's great. Um, but a great thing is to just twist it. So when you use a cliche, it kind of feels like you're cheating and you're just kind of stealing stuff from, you know, what so many other people have said. And so just try to twist it and just give a new kind of take on it. For example, you could talk about the hair rising up somewhere else like on their legs or you know they stopped breathing because they were so nervous you know um they swallow you know or they inhaled sharply you know just change it up 
And tip number five, use DNA. Now DNA stands for dialogue, narrative, and action. Readers' attention spans are very, very short. Mine is very short. And so we constantly want things to change. For a movie, we constantly want the camera angle to change. It's constantly changing. Every few seconds, the camera angle is changing. For readers, if you have a ton of dialogue, if two pages of narration, or three pages of just straight action, your readers are gonna get bored. And so you have to change things up and keep things moving. In order to do that, you use DNA and you just interweave them constantly. Want an action scene? Put in an action scene. Have a couple, you know, snarky comments, comments as they, you know, are fighting. Have some dialogue in there. Then have some narration about how they're feeling after the battle, you know. Then have some more dialogue about the other characters checking on each other. Then have some narration talking about where they're going next. You keep interweaving DNA, your story's going to flow. And so, yeah, that's really helped me in my writing. So that's it. But before I go, bonus tip, um, a good way for you to know how your characters would act for tip number one, if you want to act like your characters and act out a scene and figure out the dialogue, then interview your characters. It's really fun. Sit down with them and just ask them a list of questions and write down their response. So another good thing is to give your characters quirks, give them something like they mess with their hair a lot or they play with their jewelry when they're nervous or they scratch their earlobe when they're talking, you know, I mean, give them little quirks because people always have those and it really makes them stand out. Don't have them do it too often because it'll stand out to the reader, but have them do it enough to where it will make them unique. Your char you should know your characters really well. The reader should know them well, but they should see just the tip of the iceberg of who they are. And you're going to know everything underneath the surface of the water to really flesh out who they are. But your reader doesn't have to know everything, but if you know everything about your character, it'll help you really make them shine on the page and it will really feel like a real person and your readers will become attached and they will really enjoy reading about them. So that's everything. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Bye.